When I said last week that the MLS was the best league in the world, a lot of you got hurt. Well, I want you to know right now from the bottom of my heart that I am doubling down. The MLS is the best league in the world. I don't give a damn what any of you say. A lot of you got hurt because of that, but I am sticking to that and here's more evidence to back that up. Yeah, that's right. We're going to go through match day four. And this match week had six red cards in this game with goals galore being scored everywhere you look. Last minute winners from their own half deep into extra time. Teams picking up their first wins and teams still win less in this society of the MLS that we have right now. Starting off with Inter Miami versus DC. Or should I say DC versus Inter Miami? This was DC 1, Inter Miami 3. DC had a red card. Then we have the best game of the weekend, which is, in my opinion, Chicago versus Montreal. I mentioned before that Chicago have been unlucky not to pick up three points, and they got lucky this time in the Windy City. They won the game 4 3. Montreal had a red card, and that's where that game completely changed. I'll discuss that a bit later on. Then we have Seattle versus Colorado. Now, let's finish 1 1, but Georgie Mihaljevic missed a penalty and the chance to equal the game up. Seattle got a red card and it was kind of a late minute free kick that got the game to 1-1. Let's just quickly brush over Columbus versus New York Red Bulls. That finished 3-0 to Columbus. And another one I want to quickly brush over is New York City versus Toronto. New York City picked up the win. Toronto got a red card. It's just a disaster in all occasions right now. One that we don't want to brush over though is Minnesota versus LAFC. LAFC still failed to score once again as Minnesota won 2-0. Philadelphia continue their draw streak and they draw 2-2 with Austin as they pick up another 2-2 draw at home. Vancouver with perhaps a shock beating Dallas 3-1. Horton Kansas did break their draw streak and they won 2-1 against San Jose. And the leaders of the Western have been beaten. That was Portland Timbers three games in. They've been beaten 1-0 by a young midfield in Houston Dynamo. Nashville pick up key points against Charlotte and they win 2-1. Another game that we talked about for the ages is a 3-3 draw with LA Galaxy and St. Louis and LA Galaxy also had a red card and scored like a late minute winner once again in the MLS which backs up why it is the best league in the world but we'll speak about that a bit later on. Cincinnati beat New England which we expect 2-1. Yakimakis continues his fine goal scoring form as they beat Orlando 2-0. But now let's break over to guess the ball. Be sure to comment down below where you think that ball is or go to our shorts page, that's where they always are. We try and post them daily so you can get involved in that. Now the first game we're going to talk about is the thrilling Chicago versus Montreal. This game had seven goals, red cards and last minute winners. More than anything you can ask for and what would a game be? Liverpool Man United, Man United won it in extra time in an FA Cup draw and everyone's gone crazy about this. If this game happened in a different league, European league maybe, the Premier League, the Bundesliga, Maybe the Serie A, the French League, no one really cares about. But if this could happen anywhere else, it'd be spoke about for weeks to come. It'd be in the history books and the way this matter was won. You would see this on every highlight reel in this century, pretty much. This game starts off, though. Penalty in the 7th minutes to Montreal, 1-0 up. Penalty in the 12th minutes to Montreal, 2-0 up. Then, heading into the break and what we think, Montreal will be taking a 2-0 lead into the halftime talks. No, Chicago get one back in 45 plus eight. Talk about added on time and scoring crunch, crucial goals. Chicago's your team. Into the second half, Montreal have a 2-1 lead and then they're looking to add to it. Chicago's looking to fire back and maybe get the result at home here. Maybe even steal a point, but no, Montreal make it 3-1 in the 70th minute. And that's where the game kind of dies out. Both teams accept the defeat now. So you'd think, but I've already told you this game had seven goals. So there's still another three goals that need to be answered. Three, one down. Who gets the rest of these goals? You know the score. I've already told you. 82nd minute, Raheem Edwards gets sent off for Montreal. And that's where the switch flicks for Chicago. Everything changes. 84th minute, penalties converted. 3-2. Game on. 90 plus 5. Chicago's interest in signing, what's his name? Hugo Coopers, Kuypers, whatever you pronounce his name. Gets the equalising goal. 90 plus 5. Surely you think Chicago have now stole a point being two goals down. But like I've already said, this game had seven goals. I've only mentioned six. 90 plus 9. Killian Acosta, another acquisition from LAFC to Chicago's team, just throws the ball up into the air from his half. Last ditch attack. Route 1 style. The ball goes up. The wind carries it forward. The, like, the keeper gets his foot in all wrong. It Gets a couple of hands to it, but he actually, I believe he puts this in the back of the net, to be honest. If he didn't touch this, it might just bounce over, hit the crossbar, but he put it in the back of the net, essentially. Have a look up here, you'll see the goal in all its fineness. 90 plus 9 Chicago win the game for free. Now, how do the stats look in this game? Well, when I say domination, I mean domination, and Chicago deserve nothing less than the three points from this game. 22 shots to Chicago, 9 to Montreal. 12 shots on target, 4 on target for Montreal. Montreal scored 75% of their goals, but still could not get the victory as Chicago scored 4 goals out of 12 shots. That's 1 in every 3 shots going in. That's outstanding. 
from Chicago and they deserve nothing less than this result. Although there was a red card, Chicago kind of dominated this game all the way throughout. They had 62% possession, Montreal had 38% and Chicago just kind of dominated and the red card really was a turning point for Montreal. They might have snuck that game and won it 3-1, 3-2, but in reality, Chicago never know when to quit and they're always in this game. Now the next game is LA Galaxy versus St. Louis. Sure to be a fire game, that did not disappoint. This game finished 3-3, six goals, three apiece. In the third minute, LA Galaxy looking solid, scoring a goal to put them 1-0 up. 27th minute, St. Louis hit back, 1-1. That's how the game went into halftime, 1-1. We're looking to adjust, maybe push on for the victory. Who can strike first? LA Galaxy, 51st minute. Six minutes after the restart, they score. So three minutes after the game kicked off, LA Galaxy scored. Six minutes after the restart at half time, they score again, 2-1. But they cannot keep St. Louis out because in the 60th minute, St. Louis equalized, 2-2. Game's going back and forward. Teams are edging, trying not to concede any more goals. And that is not what happens for LA Galaxy as their goalkeeper scores an own goal in the 88th minute. St. Louis are rubbing their hands, thinking they stole a victory here in LA Galaxy. Came from behind twice to then take the lead in the 88th minute, or so they would think. But Maya Yoshida scores in the 95th minute, 90 plus five, that is correct. These games are never finished, these games never die. Until the final whistle blows in these games, continue. Then LA Galaxy get a red card in 90 plus nine, game finishes 3-3, no one could produce a victory like Chicago did. But 90 plus five, that's two goals in two games that we've just spoke about here. 90 plus five goals happen, and then something happens in the 99th minute. Honestly, with Columbus scoring the la latest goal winner last week in like the 100th minute, you can never say die in these games to pick up points. Now we're going to break down the stats. LA Galaxy had 16 shots, St. Louis had 19. That's really good shot ratio when you're away from home. But the more clinical team was LA Galaxy as they had 8 on target where St. Louis only had 5 on target. And LA Galaxy dominated possession with 67% possession to a 33% of St. Louis. But having 33% possession, hitting 5 on target, having 19 shots and scoring 3 goals. Kind of unlucky not to come away with the points, but LA Galaxy are strong. They're scoring goals for fun right now. They just need to tighten up at the back and they will push higher up this table. And the final game we're going to talk about is not as exciting as the other games we just spoke about, but this is Nashville versus Charlotte. 2-1 this game finished. Nashville took the lead in the 32nd minute, doubled their lead in the 40th minute, then Charlotte hit back in the 45 plus 4 in the first half. Game fizzled out 2-1. Sam Sturridge got on the score sheet to give Nashville the lead in the 32nd minute, which I think is very important how they bounce back from being knocked out of the CONCACAF Cup to pick up a result that they needed and they needed to get their team playing, their players playing, and that actually what happened and now they look focused on the league. Gonna be one to watch and I've pointed them out for a while once they get players back fit and once they get start playing, they can rest players now, they can get players into position. If the turnaround that they have now like of seven days to actually focus on fixtures, not focused on other stuff, they're going to be deadly. Deadly and clinical is the words I would use to describe Nashville because they had eight shots where Charlotte had nine. Nashville had two shots on target and they scored two goals. 100% conversion rate is what you want. You can't argue with that. Where Charlotte had four shots. Charlotte do look deadly. Don't get me wrong. At home, I think they will be able to cause upsets. Maybe on the road, they struggle a little bit, but they're still looking good. And Dean Smith is doing a great job there. Once the new signings come in, like Leila Bada, it's going to be really hard for teams to actually contain Charlotte because they are getting goals no matter what happens. 53% possession to 47% possession for Charlotte. Well, Charlotte had 47, Nashville had 53. Nashville just finally turned on at home and deserved to do what they do right now. Now, there is other games we could have spoke about, hence like New York City picking up their first victory. Inter-Miami, Suarez scoring late on to a brace to make them 3-1 victors over DC. But I just thought Nashville was a good one to choose. I could have shown Sport in Kansas as they picked up a victory instead of a draw this time as well. Nashville was the best one for me. Let me know what games you thought were the highlight deserved a mention this week. Turn in the comment section below and be sure to get involved in our guest the ball. And for all of you that are butt heart over me that the MLS is the best league in the world. You can't argue with these stats, man. You cannot argue and I will argue to the day I die. I will die on top of this hill that the MLS is one of the best leagues and deserves the respect that it does not get. I'm telling you right now. But for now, embrace excitement.